Good evening, everyone. So today's video is going to be discussing notarizing documents, okay? Um, I wanted to come on here and just give a little brief about how you would notarize documents. I've already done a video on you becoming a notary. I've done a video on supplies. And now let's go ahead and get into notarizing the actual documents, okay? So, common notarizations that you will come across are acknowledgments, jurats, oath and affirmation, which is really just an act that goes along with the jurat, your copy certification, which is not done in every state. So don't think like, okay, you can do it in every state. No, you cannot. This is why it's important that you make sure you read your state handbook and signature witnessing, which does not require any notarization and is also not allowed in every state. Okay. Now, acknowledgement is just someone needing to acknowledge that they understand what they are signing and that's their signature. A jurat, you're always going to see the keywords sworn to or affirmed. Okay. And a jurat is the person telling you they attest to the trueness of the content that they are signing in the document and they must sign in front of you. Now, with an acknowledgement, they can sign the document without being in your presence, but they do need to acknowledge that that is their signature on the document. With a jurat, they are going to do an oath or affirmation by raising their right hand, and then they are going to sign that document in your presence, okay? If that document has already been signed on a jurat, you are to strike a line through it initial and date, your initials and date, and have them sign again in your presence, okay? With the copy certification, it, in the state of Florida, we can do copy certifications, and what you are doing is you personally need to make a copy of the original document. I wouldn't trust them to make a copy and bring it to me. I need to make that copy myself of the original document. That is the only way that I can certify and attest to it being a true copy of the original. Okay. And there, that is an actual notarization. You will actually use a certificate for that. So you're not going to use an acknowledgement or a jurat for that type of notarization. You're going to use an actual copy certification certificate. Okay. Now with those copy certifications, some people don't want you to attach a loose certificate to it. They want you to actually place the certificate onto the document. Okay. And so I have um, some certificate stamps and this will be the one here that I would attach to the document. Okay. That's for copy certification. Like I said, I'm in Florida, so I can do that. Okay. Signature witnessing, like I said, does not require you to stamp anything. You are literally witnessing somebody is signing a document. And that's it. I'm in Florida. We are not allowed to do that. But in some states, they are allowed to do that. Okay. Now, when it's time for you to notarize a document, there are some things that you definitely want to do beforehand. Okay. You don't just go and notarize a document and that's that. You want to follow some steps to make sure that you are re meeting the requirements in your state. So the first and foremost thing you want to do is you want to make sure that that person is willing to sign that document. You want to make sure they have not been coerced, threatened, or anything like that to sign the document. Okay. They should not be scared. No one should be forcing them to do anything. So you want to first check for willingness. Second, you want to check for valid identification. Make sure that they have an acceptable type of identification that is listed in your state handbook that you can um, use in order to take for identification purposes so you can um, notarize a document for them, okay? And then after you do that, you want to review the document. You want to make sure that the document is completely filled in. You do not ever want to notarize a um, blank document because they can put anything in there after the fact. And if your notary seal is already on there, then basically you're saying that whatever they put in that document, that you were aware of it. So do not ever 
notarize a document that is not completely filled out, okay? After you've made sure everything is set with step one, two, and three, then you want to fill out your journal, okay? You should be filling out your journal before you notarize the document, okay? Fill out your journal completely. Have them sign, um, fingerprint, whatever it is that's allowed in your state. And then you want to complete the notary certificate, okay? And after you complete the notary certificate, you're going to sign and stamp, and then you're done notarizing the document, okay? Excuse me. Now, let's review the certificates that I'm talking about. Right here, as you can see, I have an acknowledgement, okay? All of these parts that you see on a certificate needs to be there in order for you to notarize a document and use a certificate. So your venue is basically your state and county, okay? Whatever state that you are commissioned in is the state that you should be notarizing in only. So you're going to put state of, okay? County is a bit different. It's not the county that you are commissioned in. It's whatever county you were in at the time of the notarization, okay? So basically they say wherever your feet are planted. So like I'm in Broward County. If I am in Boca Raton and I'm notarizing a document for someone, I'm not going to put county of Broward. I'm going to put county of Palm Beach County because Boca Raton is not in Broward County, okay? That is my venue. Next, you want to make sure you have the certificate wording. It is the wording of particulars. It's telling you exactly what you're doing, what you're attesting to, what they're acknowledging, so forth, okay? Then you want to make sure that you have here the notary sign and seal section. That's important because if you fill this out and you don't sign and stamp it, then, you know, it's not valid, right? And then you want to make sure you have on there how you identify your signer. OK, they provided what type of identification for you. Were they personally known to you? You want to make sure you put that. And then we have this optional section here. A lot of people are starting to use that because a person when you attach a loose certificate, which is a piece of paper with all of this information on it, a person can attach that document to any document after you've notarized it if you do not fill out this optional part. So this optional section is to help prevent a person from attaching it to another document other than the one you intended for it to be attached to. So it's very important, although optional, you should fill out that section, okay? Now let's look at a jurat. A jurat, that's the one I told you, they should not be signing this unless in your presence, the documents, okay? so. You're going to fill this out. Make sure you have your venue. Make sure you have your certificate wording, your notary sign and sale section, your signer identity proven by section, and then this optional section. Now, this optional section is not, it's probably not going to be on um, every certificate that you see, okay? Especially if you're doing loan documents, it's not going to be on there. This is only for loose certificates that you are attaching to documents that do not already have this notary certificate section on it, okay? Now, I know this looks a little different, but it's really not, okay? Don't get confused when you see this SS and this LS, okay? SS and LS, they are Latin abbreviations for Latin words, okay? The SS is basically just saying, in particular, OK, so you're not putting anything after this section. It's just is naming the venue. OK, state of county of that's where you particularly are notarizing the document. So SS is just meaning in particular. LS means location of seal. So that means you're going to place your seal here. That's it, guys. OK, so you see SS and LS it's nothing extra it's just some certificates may have it and some may not you're not going to come across that a lot but i have seen them so just don't get confused when you see them okay now frequently asked questions where does my seal or stamp go on a document right so your seal and stamp is going to go directly next to your signature if there's not enough room for you to put it next to your signature, 
then you may want to attach a loose certificate if it is allowed. I have come across documents sometimes where they don't permit an additional certificate to be attached and I have to find a space where I can put my stamp. Now for those purposes, I have purchased a smaller stamp. I have a traditional stamp and I have a mini stamp. Let me show them to you. I showed them to you in previous videos, but this is for those of you who have not seen those videos. Now, when you place your stamp, your stamp should not be covering any type of images, um, any printed words or anything like that. It needs to go in a spot that is clear from any obstructions. OK, it has to be a blank space. I have a traditional seal and I have the mini. OK, you can see that they're both different sizes here. OK. I bought that because I came across a document where it, I couldn't put a loose certificate and my notary stamp wasn't big enough either. Now I did go ahead and put the stamp on there. It covered a little bit of wording and I gave the person a loose certificate anyway and I made sure to put on the loose certificate that it belongs to that document and I told them to present both to the person that was going to be the receiving party and if neither was um, accepted for them to come back to me and they never came back and um, they did call and tell me that it was accepted so that worked but you will come across those okay now um, another question people have how do I sign my name I normally sign it this way but I, my name is commissioned this way however your stamp however your name is printed on your stamp that is how you have to sign like me I never sign my middle name but I'm commissioned with my full name. Excuse me. So when I sign documents, I have to sign using my middle name. I can't sign any other way. Now, how do I know what documents I can notarize? That is a state specific question and you should do your research. Make sure you look in your um, state handbook to know what type of documents you can notarize. OK, now it's not going to have specifics like it's not going to stay in their power of attorney, living will, trust, estates. Um, but what it will do is tell you what you cannot notarize. So you are just because the because these handbooks can have a lot of vague um, information in it, you kind of have to use your better judgment. OK, so if you know what documents you cannot notarize, then you assume that you can notarize other documents, right? Anything that's not that, that's pretty much what we have to go off of, unfortunately. What you can do, however, is notaries that are in your state that may have a website, you can go on their website so you can look. Um, that's, make sure it's a notary in your area, in your state. And that will give you a pretty good idea of what type of documents you can notarize because they've either already done the research and listed all the documents that they can notarize or um, you probably can Google it as well. OK. Now, the big question, how much can I charge per notarization? You got to look in your state handbook. Every state is different. In Florida, I can charge ten dollars. In California, they can charge 15. In Georgia, I think it's five dollars or two dollars. So it's different in every state. OK, so you have to do that research. You have to look in your um, state handbook and see what you can charge per notarization. OK. And then you also need to see if you are allowed to charge travel, because if you're doing general notary work, um, what you would charge per transaction is how many documents you're notarizing plus travel. OK, some states have a specific amount you can charge and some states don't have that um, specified. So you can charge whatever you want. When do you use a loose certificate? Like I said before, you will use a loose certificate um, for um, a few different reasons. One, in some states, the notarial wording has to match what the state certificates are for how they're formatted. And you can see that in your state handbook. In my state handbook, it tells me what type of um, certificates we can use, like the wording and things like that. Um, some states, I'm not sure if I, I'm sure. I'm not sure if every state has it, let's put it that way, has a specific wording. I know California is very specific. If their certificate wording is not 
exactly the way California wants it to be, then they can't use that certificate that's on the document. They have to attach a loose certificate. So um, you would also use one, like I said, if there's no space for you to sign or put your seal, okay? Whenever you're attaching a loose certificate, you wanna put on the document somewhere, see attached certificate so that they know that that document is not alone. It is joined together with a loose certificate that was notarized, okay? And then another reason why you would use a loose certificate is if a person presents a document to you that has no notarial certificate on it whatsoever, because sometimes people may have to type up a letter and they need to get it um, validated by having it notarized, like the receiving party just wants it notarized for some reason. You can do that, but you need to attach um, notarial wording to it. You can either do it by using a stamp, like what I have here, or you can attach a loose certificate like the ones I showed you, okay? And like I said, you want to put on the document, if you're attaching a loose certificate, see attached certificate. When you're filling out that optional section, make sure you put on there what document that certificate was intended to be used for, so that that person cannot in any way try to place that onto a different document that you were not aware of, okay? Now, um, that is all I have for notarizing documents. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Um, don't forget to like my video if you found it to be um, valuable and very useful for you. Don't forget to subscribe because I am going to be posting future videos and you definitely want to be notified of such. Um, I will put um, in the description below my Facebook group if you are interested in joining my Facebook group. And um, yeah, that's all I got, guys. So thank you for watching. Have a good night and I'll see you again soon. Bye.